Okay guys, today we're doing a real simple reaction. Just a quick metathesis reaction. And what we're going to make here is cobalt azide. And the only reason I really even decided to show the synthesis is because the color change is very dramatic and very pretty uh, when you add the azide anion in. So what we're looking at here, um, this is 1.4 grams of um, cobalt nitrate in about 20 milliliters of water. I've got that on gently heating and stirring just to get it to dissolve. So let's get that to dissolve and then we can add our azide salt. And this isn't gonna take very long at all because this water has been heating as I was setting up the camera. In fact, it looks like it's pretty much dissolved already. Now, normally when you do this reaction, you would first dissolve your azide powder. However, I used enough water in this. It should have only taken about 10 milliliters. There's enough water in there that it will directly dissolve the azide powder. And I think the color change is a lot more dramatic uh, when you add the salt directly. So let's go ahead and do that. But first I'm going to zoom in just so you can... No, I guess you can see it good enough from there. Watch this color change. This is very pretty goes a very deep purple almost as soon as the azide hits it and that was uh, 1.5 uh, what did I say I used of the cobalt that was, that was one gram of cobalt and that's 1.5 grams of the azide salt and that the azide salt that has a stoichiometric excess just slightly uh, but I wanted to make sure that it favored the reaction all the way to make sure everything was done. But look at that. I mean, that's just such a lovely... It looks almost black on camera, but that is like a very deep purple color. Um, color that you, uh, you should really only see with cobalt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this... It's already heated up enough. So uh, what I'm going to do is I am just going to switch this over to this hot plate here that doesn't heat. And I'm just going to allow this to stir so that these chemicals can really get to know each other. And I'm going to do that for mm, maybe 10 or 15 minutes or so. And then uh, we're just going to let it cool and we'll extract our crystals out of it. That's all there is to it, guys. This sodium azide I actually purchased uh, from a store that you can find on both eBay and on Amazon. However, it's not hard to make sodium azide. There's a lot of good videos about it. Uh, and really all you need is uh, sodium hydroxide, um, some um, isopropyl nitrite, that's nitrite with an I, and hydrazine sulfate. It's rather sketchy synthesis though because you are going to be producing some hydrozoic acid gas which is very toxic so I don't recommend doing it. Um, the only reason you should ever really try to perform that synthesis is if you cannot get your hands on uh, azide salt like potassium or sodium azide to start out with but sodium azide is pretty readily available so it should not be that hard. All right, so we're just going to keep this stirring for a while, and uh, I'll come back when we have some crystals.
can see here, uh, this stuff, the blue colorization, um, I'm not exactly sure why that happened. <clears throat> I know that it, it is directly because of uh, the acetone on the cobalt azide. Um, I found uh, research, or literature I should say actually, that uh, says that that is common uh, to happen, that blue color. Um, when you combine this cobalt azide onto, uh, or I mean with a um, organic solvent of pretty much any type. Uh, but I just wanted to show you here, this has been drying for uh, about six hours or so um, on a on a plate here. And I have, you know, a couple paper towels underneath of it. Um, not sure exactly what all the, the orange discoloration is. Um, the only thing that I can think of is that might be um, sodium nitrate that had reacted with the acetone that I had used to uh, wash and dry this in the last washing step. Um, and it, it produced this kind of funky, you know, kind of uh, baby shit yellow color, I guess. So um, what I'm going to do, I've got in the oven right there, I'm charging up some uh, three angstrom sieves. And I'm going to uh, take this nifty guy I got right here. It's got a nice uh, silicone seal around it. And uh, it's pretty nice because I just throw the sieves in the bottom and then this tray goes right down over top and then my azide will be right here. And uh, this was solid when I bought it, but you know, I drilled all these holes in it. So it makes a, a really nice little makeshift desiccator for six bucks. Uh, so, uh, while I'm waiting on the sieves to dry, that's what I'm going to do is uh, get that stuff off the filter and we'll get it into the desiccator. <laughs> Okay guys, here's a little burn test of this stuff. I've already done it once off camera, but you can see right here, there's a little piece. And this is not going to be too impressive, so don't hold your breath. And I can show you exactly why this is not as impressive as it should be here in a moment. But first, let's just burn this so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. This is the cobalt azide. Uh, as you can see, it is energetic somewhat, but hardly explosive, like I anticipate that it should be, and there's a simple reason for this. Well, there we got a little tiny, tiny detonation at the end. Now the reason for this, oh, there it is, burn the rest of this off. So, here's the reason for this. This here, this is what I just tested. Come on, focus, damn it. Let me try to zoom out. Maybe you can see it better. There. This is what I just tested, and you can see it's... Uh, hold something white behind it. There you go. You can see how this looks nice and purple still. Kind of looks black on camera. Uh, it's kind of misleading. Um uh, this stuff was dry quicker uh, than the rest of it, so I pulled it out. And this is what the stuff looks like that I had left drying 
uh, over some sieves and uh, some calcium chloride. And you can see how white that has gotten. And what that tells me is, is that a lot of, um, well, uh, maybe not a lot, but enough sodium azide crystallized back out with this uh, to kind of hinder its um, energetic properties. Uh, which is really surprising to me because I used a slight excess of the sodium azide, but not that much. I mean, it was like, I think like a tenth of a gram, not even excess. I mean, I guess that was just too much. So I'm going to recrystallize this and then we'll test it again. But uh, this video is already as long as I think that it should be for you guys. So I'm going to recrystal it and then I'll do another video on the testing. But uh, just real quick here for the comparison's sake, so you guys can see the difference. Yeah, you can really tell the difference of the two different colors there. See, the one on the right is very dark, and on the left, you can see all the white, and that's the sodium azide on the surface. Uh, but you know what? Before I conclude this video, just for shits and grins, let's uh, do just a little burn test of some of this stuff with the visible sodium on it just because we have it we might as well try it right all right so let's try to burn some of this and let's see how this goes probably should be relatively the same oh well that was a little a little bit more energetic actually that's shocking jumped right off. Let's try that again. Okay. Well, that's interesting. You know, let's try that with a little bit bigger of a piece. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, uh... Huh. Well, maybe that's not sodium azide that's coming out. Maybe it just turns gray after it's completely dry. Maybe the stuff, the, the darker stuff, just isn't dry enough yet. That could be what's going on here. Alright, so here's another little piece. Let's see what this does now. Let's try some indirect heat from the bottom. Ooh, actually detonated. Okay, so that's what the problem was. It just is not dry enough. So that dark stuff is not dry enough. Haha, ha. I'm glad I decided to do that extra burn test because that showed us something. So the next video is not going to be me recrystallizing and uh, trying to uh, mess around with it after that. My next video will be on a confined and friction test of this. So stay tuned, guys. That's what's coming next. And until then, I hope you enjoyed and see you the next time. Let's try some indirect heat from the bottom. Ooh!